For this week's video, we're having a look at division, and there's one video for everyone in Year 6. The first thing, and the main thing for understanding division, is that we see it as an inverse of multiplication. Here, I've got 18 circles, and if I'm doing 18 divided by 6, I'm asking myself, how many sets of 6 are there in 18? There are, of course, 3. Now, that very principle, seeing division as how many lots of this number in that number, must stay with us when we're doing harder questions. There's another really important principle that we need to understand. When we're multiplying, it doesn't matter the order of the numbers in the multiplication. 6 times 3 and 3 times 6 give the same answer, 18. That's not the same when we're dividing. Here, we can see that 8, split into 2 groups, is 4. However, 2, split into 8 groups, is very different. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 quarters. So 2 divided by 8 is actually 0 0.25. I can see the order of the numbers here changes the answer. Now, I'll just emphasise again, when you're dividing mentally, be really clear that what you're thinking about is how many of this number is there in this number. So when I'm trying to do 150 divided by 25, I'd think, well, there's 6 25s in 150, so my answer is 6. Here are some divisions for you to have a go at mentally. Some are easier, some get extremely difficult. See how many you can manage. So let's see how you got on. How many 9s in 54? Well, of course there are 6. 9 times 6 is 54. How many 6s in 40? Well, 6 6s six are 36, so that'll give me a remainder of 4. And I would also have to divide the 4 by 6 as well, so I deal with that remainder properly. So that would leave me with 6 and 4 sixths. I could simplify 4 sixths, of course, to 2 thirds by dividing the top and the bottom by 2. Um, there are 8 1.5s in 12. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 lots of a half is 4. And add that together. And then that will get you to your 12. And then finally, how many quarters? How many 0.25s in 3.5? Well, of course, there's 4 quarters in 1. So there must be 12 quarters in 3, another 2 quarters in the 0 0.5, and so that will be a total of 14. You can see here that even though I'm dividing, because I'm dividing by a decimal, the number itself is actually getting bigger. Also, when dividing, you've got to think about what you do with any remainders, and that might depend on the actual context of the question. Have a go at these three questions, and have a think about the form that the answer needs to take. So for the first question, we'd have to do 163 divided by 20 gives us 8 remainder 3. Now that would tell us that we'll need 9 helicopters, because actually 8 helicopters wouldn't be enough for all the people. There would still be 3 left over. For the second question, if the friends each paid £15, of course that would only make £60. So there'll be another £3 that they'll need to come up with, and that's between the four of them. So actually they'll need to pay another three quarters of a pound, or another 75p. So in total they'll pay 15.75. Now, of course, in real terms they might feel generous and want to give a tip. And in the final example, of course, we'd have to do 90 divided by 25, which would give us three remainder 15. And that's saying I can afford three full lessons, and because I haven't got enough money for the fourth one, I've not got £100, of course, in this case, I have to round down three lessons. There's two main written methods we use for division, the bus stop method and the chunking method. We'll have a look at both. We usually use the bus stop method for single div digit divisions, and we'll be saying to ourselves, how many eights in three? Zero. Carrying three. There are four eights in 37, and that leaves a remainder of five. And six eights are 48, leaving a remainder of three. And, and of course, giving that answer as a fraction, that would be 46 and three eights. Now, if you're looking for an explanation as to why this method works, have a look at the previous video that we showed you in the autumn term, and that will explain in more detail. Now, for the chunking method, I'd be saying to myself, how many 24s are in 512? 
And to start off with, I'd work out how many tens of 24 I can fit in. Well, 10 24s are 240, so 20 24s will be 480. Now, I'll subtract the 480 from 512, and that will give me 32. And I'd now say to myself, well, how many more 24s are in 32? And, of course, there's just another one. That will leave a remainder of 8. To work out the answer, how many 24s are in 512, I'll need to add up those two numbers, giving me my answer of 21 remainder 8, or 21 and 8 twenty-fourths. Now, of course, I can simplify that fraction to make it 21 and 1 third. Now, here's some questions for you to have a go at. Maybe try two of the mental questions and one of the written questions. Try and challenge yourself at a level that you think's right for you. Pause the video and have a go. So, for the mental questions, 7 fives are 35, and the difference between 35 and 38 is 3. So 5 remainder 3, or 5 and 3 sevenths. Um, how many 15s in 600? Well, I would probably think... Um, there's 10 15s in 150, and then 4 lots of 150 in 600, so that'll give me 40. Um, how many 2.5s in 100? Again, I would probably multiply 2.5 by 10 to get 25. How many 25s in 100? 4, so that must be 40. And finally, how many halves in 8.5? Well, there'll be 16 halves in 8, and then another one in the 0 0.5, so that gives me a total of 17. Now, I'm not going to talk through all the written calculations for the other three questions, but have a look at the working out, pause the video, see if it matches yours. Maybe you used a slightly different strategy, but have a look, see what works for you, and well done. We'll see you next week in class.